So we have audio. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. I'm so glad to see you here tonight. So, um, we are in a series um, during this month about community. The theme is created for community. And is this helping me? Can you hear me with this mic? OK, she's on it. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Is it Tyler? All right. I'm really bad with things. So I actually just called you Kyle. And then my brain said, that's not a thing. So, are we good? Right. So if you don't mind, I'll open us up in prayer. God, thank you so much for um, the ways that you pursue us. You um, help us to see that you are with us. Lord, that that um, you show us things that spark joy, that spark our curiosity, our curiosity, ways that bring us peace, ways that give us encouragement, especially ways that help us to see that we are not alone ever. Before this evening, for the air conditioning and the space for the amazing that you've been giving us. Lord, I pray that you, all those who are not here tonight, those that are home or doing things that are important, Lord, be with those that are not feeling well, that are so injured. Pray that they are comforted um, with your presence and with healing. Give these, this discussion that we're about to enter tonight, we, Lord, we ask you to show us how you would like us to understand um, community and how to be community with each other. In your name, amen. All right, welcome again. So if you were last week, we had a, a very lively discussion about, um, create, about being a community. We focused on um, a lot of discussion was focused on boundaries and um, and how to you know how to love one another. Tonight we're going to go into a, a slightly different regarding community, and just want to do a little bit of a background summary. So I started this off a couple weeks ago, explaining the biblical for community and how um, in Genesis that when God created us, that God was referring to himself in plural, God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and how it's in community, and we are created, and we experience community too. We discussed what it means to, um, to love, and sometimes it's hard to love some folks in community, especially if there's been some hurts, some trust broken, and to the discussion about boundaries. So today, what I have to do is discuss more about a couple of things. What it looks like for us to be on this journey, and what is a good community model. And so that's where I'd like to take us today. So um, because we're talking about community, I wanted to also talk about of, of being alone. And I want to clarify, the opposite of being in community is not the action of being alone. And by being alone, there's a couple of ways that you can, you can understand that. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am, I'm a twin. And so I'm a twin. So even while I was in my mother's womb, obviously I was not alone. I was with my mom. And I, I had my sister with me. And then years later, we had another, and got married. Very kind of young. I got married when I just turned 20. So I left my childhood home and moved in with my husband. And we've been married for 32 years. So early on, for economic reasons, for honestly evangelical reasons, we had housemates. Greg and I did. So we were living in L.A. And it was really hard to pay us to have more housemates. So we had housemates, and we did that. And that was a kind of intentional community. And then I um, and decided that I didn't want to use the energy in that kind of community anymore because living with people is kind of messy. It's kind of hard. There's a lot. Of <laughs> and so I decided to focus.
but we, Greg and I, intentionally lived in close we, in that sense, we lived in a type of Christian community. So our first year of marriage, um, we did not, but then we moved to where we were going to school. We went to UCLA, and rent was more expensive. We got house money. Um, and then when we didn't have house anymore, we still intentionally lived in a neighborhood that was near our church and had neighbors that we got to know who were who were very much following God and trying to be good neighbors. And then, and then we heard several things going on here in Fresno. And this is where we're from. And, um, and we wanted to be part of it. We moved back into Fresno. We moved into the Lowell. there and um we've been there since so now we we first moved into an apartment complex in a house walks away from that complex but i live i have i have several neighbors that i if i stand on my porch that go to on ramps i could stand on my porch and see several neighbors from on ramps and then the other has happened to have a lot of christians too so i we call it i call it Parish Row. I just made up that nickname. And so, um, and so I am, you, you, I'm constantly surrounding myself with people. I, I wait for some quiet space. I'm also an extrovert. And so I get energy from being, so I've had to learn and mature into the of going away and being alone. And so in that sense, for me, aloneness isn't aloneness, it's not isolation, it's intentional. So I can hear God, I could hear myself. Um, and so that's something I've grown to. So that's a type of I have to intentionally do, like separate myself from people, because I really enjoy being around, always around people, usually. Um, but that's that kind of aloneness is different than, than that isn't refreshing or life giving. Loneliness, right? That's that many, of and it, it could be because of my. It could be because I'm surrounded by really good people. Um, I really experience feeling loneliness. I feel like, uh, to give you um, some more information about myself, I'm a life coach. So I have clients that come to me, and they often actually experience loneliness. And, and when they describe it to me, is they, they may be around other people, but they don't feel seen or heard. And so maybe they're not around other people. Maybe because. seen and heard that causes a type of does that make sense yeah so when I think community Christian community and I think about our, um, what our God has done for us an idea that I really liked for most of my life is that God understands this idea of loneliness that we may feel that we're not seen or heard and Jesus is in was specifically for that. Like God did not, not want his creation to feel separated from themselves. He sent Jesus to be human, human interactions to help us with that, that connection to our God. So I that's not I, I, that sounds pretty reasonable, right? Like doesn't sound, um, uh, hopefully not new to anybody. So if that's the case, what it is, is it for us then? What does it mean for us to each other? So that's, that's what I'd like to open it up. We are created to live in community. So because we're Christians, 
created our being like this. What? There's no wrong answers. So what are your ideas? Look like. Kyle said, everyone living with peace. Well, I love that regardless, you everyone helping each other out. Regardless. Other thoughts of Christian community? No judgment. Your own experience, like as you think about when you're in, uh, however you would categorize Christian community for yourself, what, what do you see as good about Christian community? I, that's beautiful. I love that. This idea of hunger for more. Um, yeah, when more together, there's this energy that's created, right? This synergy. Alice? Working together to build home. Really good. Oh yeah. Um, thank you, <laughs> Laura. Thank that was excellent. Spending time together, learning each other's gifts, loving each other, um, especially to love others. Selfless, being selfless. This is a really good list. This is a really good list. This is not always an easy um, concept to go into. This idea of community and living this way, selfless, spending time together intentionally, it's learning each other, motivating, motivating each other to love, um, working together to build shalom, um, living with peace, helping each other out regardless, no judgment. Um, creating that hunger for more, that energy that keeps you going. This is all beautiful. But in reality, because we're people, we're humans, life is it's messy. I got to tell you, as a life coach, often um, I have clients I have clients that come to me for, for many different reasons. And my specialty is helping people with stress, helping them with their response to stress. Usually, you could, if, you, if there was the, the, the one cause of stress, in my clients' lives is other people. It's a family member, a spouse, um, business, you know, relationship. It is, it's usually so they want me. To, they want they meet with me. They pay me. Other person. So my job is to help them understand we cannot we can't do that. We cannot fix the other person. We can, <laughs> we have to first yes we have to work on ourselves. And um, and so that you know, I, we try to I try to have that conversation early on, like our first meeting. We have to fix that person. Um, but at least, if, if you don't mind, I could walk with you and help you understand the triggers with that person that's causing you so much stress. And with um, there's a lot of a lot of good that will come up. In um, in Galatians. Paul talks about, too, this idea of uh, the whole book of Galatians, right, is about Christian community and um, understanding a different way of doing relationships. 
So in Galatians 3, 23, 28, it says, I'm going to read this first, but if somebody else can read 5, 12 through 24, I think so. Thessalonians 5, 12, 2 through 5, 12 through 24. Well, then, actually, Galatians 3, 23 through 28. And okay. Mm -hmm. 5, 12 through 24. And then Laura's going to read Galatians 3, 23 through 28. For all of you who were baptized in Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Thank you so much, Laura. Yeah. Wendy, yeah, go ahead. Um, first set the volume is five. 12 through 24. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage this hearted, help the weak with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays wrong all have to do what is good for each other and for everyone else rejoice pray continually give thanks this is god's will for you in Christ jesus watch the spirit do not treat contempt but test them all hold on to evil may god himself May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. The one who calls you is faithful, and He will do it. Thank you, Wendy. So, two passages. Anything strike you about the community? It sounds great. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, you know, um, I think initially when we read this admonishment, it sounds, it sounds good and it makes sense. Um, and we though try to do it in our regular lives, we realize it's it's harder to do. So um, I'm going to step back and use somebody else's words regarding this. If you've been to a missional members kind of introduction time or a family meeting where, where um, the theology of on-ramps is kind of tried to be discussed, and I say because there's not one theology of on-ramps, it's from many different and such that this um, Eric Eric Mass Foss talks about this and he, he got it from somebody named I think it's Hybert of a bounded church versus a church with fuzzy kind of fuzzy and centered church and so and I'm seeing some nodded heads right so this idea and I'm really going to summarize and paraphrase but this idea of a bounded church is that when quite how do we know when somebody is a Christian? People inside 
if it was a certain side of the circle doing the right things are the Christians and people outside. So many people, maybe not, um, there's a lot of Christians It doesn't, is that freedom in Christ, you know, the grace in Christ. And so, um, so another, Another um, example of church is the idea of when we have those strict boundary lines, we could have this fuzzy fuzziness. So it's kind of like we're going to let everybody do their own thing. And, and you know, we're just going to trust everybody's going to do their, their own thing. And here we are. But because we're human and because it's honestly because it's not centered on something that was super good, like God. Um, idea of a church where, and um, Eric does a really great job of drawing this out. So you can imagine, imagine us all like this. And so in the center of the room, let's say it's a relationship with God. So anybody having a relationship with God wouldn't consider part of the church key. As in, they are, we can say they are fellow, fellower, fellow um, because they are pursuing God. Now, how they look different depending on who we are, right? And so it may be that, um, that if you're a new Christian, you're pursuing God by your, you're attending every, every Bible study you can and you're reading the Word and that's how you're doing it. And, and maybe somebody else is pursuing God uh, by, um, by learning, trying to figure out how to forgive somebody or through things that we discussed last week. And so somebody else is pursuing God by trying to have some hope because they've just suffered some great loss. And so they're not doing maybe they're maybe not even but they're just trying to survive and they're crying out. So this idea of a centered church is that anybody who is who's focusing on their relationship or moving towards a relationship with God. That's that's who was in this community. Have you guys does that sound right, so folks? Okay. So what happens? That's on the frame. Just stay, stay in the frame. What happens when we have to be in that kind of a community? First, something that has strict boundaries, right? Like your experience. I'm trying not to, I'm not looking for a particular answer. Um, if you've experienced a bounded community um, with these strict rules of in and out versus a, um, a centered community, what's your, what comes with, like, how do we, how do we, in a centered set church community, how do we do that? Our ways, that's where the creativity comes in, that we are, have all within us is the creativity, and that's what makes us special. And that focus and it's surrounded by God, no matter how about where we're Christians, because we're still aiming, we're always going to be aiming to do it, and we're all never going to be perfect, but as long as we have that in, in common, we hide, but we're going to be creative, and that's how we get our creativity flowing. Because we're not all perfect, but we get to grow and we get to know what works and what doesn't work and what's going to get. That is so good. But that's messy. Yeah, but no one says it's going to be clean. So, that's really good. Yeah. Wendy. Um, Tyler. Thank you, Wendy. Um. I don't know if I'm like understanding right, but uh, like the first church you're talking about that's really strict. I think if you're sh too strict on who you're letting in, you're 
you're putting away people who have spiritual gifts, right? That your, your church, and so you're you're kind of in a way neglecting your. Whereas if you're a centered church, I think it's something that you're making sure that everyone is gifts, so that that church can flourish to its best ability. You know. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's really good. Oh, can you? That's why they call it the body. Like he was saying, um, you wouldn't cut off the ear and be like, "We're good. We have it already," or you wouldn't cut off a toe and be like, "Well, five others or nine others." You want all to be. You wouldn't eliminate or push away something that just because it don't look right, don't smell right, fit your, you know, your category. But it's going to function, and it's needed for the function is to go forward. That's really good. Now, yeah. let's talk about some um, some real life examples of living like this. So I got to tell you, because of because of years of intentionally building relationships, I just have to go out my front door and stand, and I and I will have I will have interactions with people, and usually with people that I have now had um, history with, we've done things together, so, but that's not everybody's situation, not everybody who's an extrovert, who knows all, all her neighbors, and just has to walk outside, stand on the sidewalk for a while, and, um, and we'll have some interactions, so how do we intentionally, how do we intentionally get into community, not in it? Can you say that into the mic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to search for it. How do you do that? Go to, go to church. Look up on ramps. There you, you just go. <laughs> no, that's actually that's a really good answer. You go to church. However, you can come, come to church here. You can come to Tuesday nights and come to Saturday nights and come to um, men's breakfast, or women's conference, and and still not, not right? Is that you know, and so, so with that, and that's just real, you know, like, oh, hey, Suze, what did you say? <laughs> oh, hey, Suze says not our men's breakfast. So, so if you're not, if you don't have community, all you have to do is show up at the next men's breakfast, engage relationally. They will not let you out the door without being seen and heard. I, to, oh, can, we, can you say that in the mic? We have to take chances on building a relationship, on doing something that seems uncomfortable, um, dealing with people that you don't never had a good relationship before. And as a Christian, I feel like. I'm in a different space, and I want to do good for that person, but it also feels draining to me because it's like, God, am I really doing the right thing? And so I feel like, yeah, I am, but it's still draining if that part of my flesh feels like I want to give it to you the way you gave it to me, but I'm taking a chance on doing what Jesus would want me to do, so I feel like taking a chance is, could be building a better community, a Christian community. That, that's really good. Grandpa Dave? Yeah, I got two things. One is an example, and the other one is where I think we are now. The, the example is one of the best ways to form community is to, is to talk to Jesus and have him come over and paint your fence. Because the next thing you know, Anna's going to be over there with tacos. I mean, you've just got it made. That's community right there. It builds, it builds out better. <laughs> it's a true story. Uh, I think we've just been through a couple of years or more of, of, uh, of sort of uh, over-the-top isolation. You know, the, all of that experience that everybody went through of, you know, you can't quite get together. You really don't know if you should have people in your house. You don't know if you should go to a coffee shop. 
And I think that it made every, I think it, it created a whole new layer of introversion for even among extroverts. You know, there's just a sense of, I, I'm not sure I remember how to do this. It, and it, it really isn't like riding a bicycle and you always know, you never fall off after that. I have a bunch of us have fallen off bicycles when we haven't ridden for too long. I'm, I'm one of those. And, uh, you know, I had to kind of, I had to relearn. I think we're all in a relearning process. So, like Wendy and I have been talking, how can we, you know, have more people over for dinner? How can we have more people over for coffee? How can we go out and meet people for coffee, different places or whatever? Or tea, I mean, I'm not pushing coffee. I'm saying, you know, it can be tea, it can be fruit juice. But how can we find normal spaces for personal interaction? Because we're, we've all kind of lost the knack. And, and so patience with ourselves and with each other, I guess, as we as we try to relearn how to find our way in what never used to be quite so hard for us because we were practicing it a lot more. But it's, we're, I, I don't know, we're out of practice. And I don't know if anybody else can, feels a little bit that way too. Yeah, that, that's really good. That's really good. It's the, it's the, the intentionality is being in these spaces where life can happen. So where you can, um, Maybe, maybe you weren't planning on doing something for someone, but you won't know that somebody needs something done for them or that you could even join them in that unless you are somehow finding a way to, to be in the same space with each other. It used to be that, you know, we would go after church and we'd like all cram into a restaurant, right? Well, we, the pandemic hit and we weren't doing that anymore. And so um, I used to, the, lot, so the group that I'm with, the nonprofit I'm with, we do trainings um, and the very last training we did was at the beginning of March of 2020. And we had, like, we had 40 people in a space where 20 people could sit comfortably. We were just packed. And it was good. And then we couldn't do that again, right? And so, um, and, and those kind of being that close together created opportunities to speak into each other's lives, to hear different stories. But we're, so we're in this interesting new place, right? So the pandemic is not over. I, people are sick. The reason I'm speaking tonight is because the person that was going to speak tonight, facilitate tonight, is sick. And so, um, so we have to be cautious, and it's hard to plan, right? We're going through this weird two, now third year, where it's hard to plan. And so, yeah, this, uh, we need to be creative. And it's, many of us are tired. We are tired. Um, and I, I found out recently, I am tired. My body is tired because my hormones were out of whack from being stressed out. And so now I'm in on this road of, um, of healing in that way. But many of us are tired just because it's been such a tiring season. So in the midst of the fatigue, to, um, to like decide, okay, this may be more than I'm used to, but how do I enter this space? And sometimes you have to create. I mean, you have to intentionally create the space. So um, let's say, like, what are examples? Like, I'm gonna, I don't know why this example is coming into my head. Maybe it's because Jesus has all the answers. But um, like, if you were going to come to the men's breakfast, but you have some extra time, maybe you have time before the men's breakfast. Maybe you have some time even um, days before the men's breakfast to offer to help to do something at the men's breakfast with somebody else. Like, don't let them assign you to do something on your own. Like, can you join somebody else to do something? Because when we, as people, do something with somebody else, it's interesting. I mean, you know, stories are shared. Life is shared. Like, you, it doesn't have to be grand. So my kids are now, I have adult kids, and I got to just tell you, for those who don't have adult kids, you're going to arrive. It's going to be so nice. It's so nice to have adult kids. <laughs> so it's, you get more time to yourself, more rest. It's wonderful. Um, but, like, if you have kids and you do life with another family with kids, that alone, that kind of intentionality alone is life-giving because those kids are going to give you things to work on in the midst of that moment, right? Like, they have to be fed. You want to keep them safe. You're monitoring them. You're trying to have an adult conversation. Um, you're being aware of other things going on. So even something like that can create life relationships. Any other thoughts? Tyler? Oh, Tyler, do you mind waiting for the mic that's coming your way? All right. 
Um, it's kind of saying I I have an answer for you because I said you were, I said you have to search right for the you have to search for a community. And you said, well, how do you do that? And I think that if you truly love your community, then you're gonna find a way to engage with it. And so I think God, right? If if you genuinely have that that just love for your community, God will open a door for you and he'll show you how you, he wants you to engage with your community. So I may not be able to tell you an exact way, but I can tell you that God will open the door to make the way. That's really good. And then on the set, I think it's the same thing. It doesn't even have to be that hassling of, of time consuming. Or it's just as long as we're we're acting and interacting with whoever may be around us, there's always going to be someone listening or watching or from afar that we don't even know that we're shining on, but they're going to take that, and that's building communities alone because if they like something that they're seeing, they're going to implement it in whatever way they can as well. So we're making things grow without even knowing, just from us just being hungry for whatever it may be, as long as it's in in some sort of way, guidelines that we're in, we're, we're doing it without even actually getting, uh, wasting any energy. We're just living our lives the way he wanted us to live. But right now we're learning, and there's always going to be eyes, the way, especially now in these days, there's always going to be ears and eyes watching something, and it's going to rub off one way or another to the ones that want to be receptive to it. So that those communities alone. Yeah, that, that's really good. You're right. There's some science about that too. As we work on ourselves, as we heal, walk with God, and, um, and, and, and deal with some of the, the pain, maybe the trauma response that we have, grief that we have, as we do us, as we learn to, to, be, to sit in God's love and God's grace, as we do that for ourselves, it benefits the people around us. So the science community will say that, like they've done all this research, and they may not say, as the, you know, as somebody um, sits with God, but they recognize the value of having faith, and that, like, that is, there's no. Let me just let me just clarify. In concerns about that, like, it is known that humans benefit from having faith, and now God has allowed us to have the te technology to know that as somebody heals, the people around them are going to benefit from that healing, like biologically. Okay, so that brings me to another important, a really important um, point, is that maybe you do not feel comfortable being around other people. Maybe um, for whatever reason, or you want to be, but you have, let's say, anxiety. Or maybe you have some phobias. And those are real. Those are real things. And so there's help. For you, so um, there's counselors you can see if you prefer a Christian counselor. Um, counselors are are very open to letting you know if they are or not. Um, most counselors are trained to work with folks whether they have faith or a different faith or not, which is really important, right? What they want to do is help you heal. Um, or maybe you let people know you enter a small group and you let people know, I have some anxiety being here. This is making me nervous. So I want to be here, but I just want you to know that I'm kind of nervous. Just, you know, feel free to ask me how I'm doing, but don't put the spotlight on me or I'm going to run out the door, right? Like, it's like just, just wanting to let you know. And so, um, and it, yeah, I mean, those, those are healing things that we could do, right? And, um, and the reason why I earlier brought on these verses, this idea of, um, especially from Galatians 3, this idea that there's like no... There's neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male or female, um, for we're all one in Christ Jesus, is because that's where the tension in relationships comes in, right? So we're now intentionally doing life together, trying to build community, but they believe, that person believes something different than me, or they do something, they clean different than me, they discipline their children different than I do, or they, um, something. And so... Very interesting that God is inviting us to be aware of the differences that we see in each other, but be motivated by by love and by grace. Does that make sense? I bet nobody in this room has ever like 
thought, I cannot believe they're doing it that way. Why would anybody do that that way, right? But to be aware of that, and that is actually part of, of this, this growth that happens in community because the spotlight comes on to us. There's this thought that, and I'm not sure how much research is on this, but like um, the idea of your biggest pet peeve is what you, what you also suffer from. What you really can't stand about somebody else is, is a weakness that you have. And because you don't have grace for yourself, you, you really can't stand it in somebody else. So when you feel that tension in community, you know, to consider like, well, what, why am I feeling that tension? Why is my anxiety going up? I see some, like, lots of thinking going, what? Yeah, <laughs> you've never heard that? I remember when I first heard that, I'm like, that's not me. No, <laughs> like that, that's for somebody else, not for me. But to be, you know, when we're, when we're doing life in community too, our presuppositions, the way we think everything should be, that's challenged. Because now we're, we're doing life with other people and they don't have the same mind we do. I mean, if you have siblings, you know that you could be raised in the same house, heard the same things, gone to the same schools, and have really different opinions on things. So imagine people coming from different backgrounds, different cultures, different you know, um, age demographics, economic demographics, from education backgrounds, and um, having them come together, right? Like that, that is also the beauty of community. To, to instead of being irritated, well, you might initially be irritated and annoyed, but to question that. Why am I irritated and annoyed? Like you might be a really good not, not letting people know that you're irritated and annoyed, but if you are, you know, to go, why is that person rubbing me wrong? Instead of just assuming that um, you, you should not be doing life with that person, maybe ask the question, I wonder why that, maybe not to that, maybe not to that person, either to yourself and God or somebody you trust. I wonder why that person is really rubbing me wrong. What's going on here? You know, and be curious about that and see what God may bring to light. Any thoughts about those things? Tyler? I think Dave's coming your way. Grandpa Dave. Uh, I was just going to say, I think that was important what you said is about the differences because I think, um, I think a lot of days, you know, now we tend to let the differences tear apart the community, right? Instead of letting it strengthen and, and just kind of accepting and loving, you know? And so those differences can either tear us apart or we can use it to build up stronger, you know? And so I think it's important, you know, to, to see the difference and then just accept it, right? We'll just love each other for who we are. That's really good. That's really good. And it's difficult. It's not as easy as, I mean, you say it so well, but it is, it's difficult to, to do that kind of love. Hello. Yeah. Hey, Seuss. <laughs> well, Hello. I'm just saying, I, I know about community. I, where I work at, I'm, I got you know, I got men that uh, they have to, uh, but actually don't have to, but eventually they're from different parts of the places, uh, uh, different uh, backgrounds, all that where I work at. But when we're in my group, when I have my group, it's all about sharing with each other and, and, and opening up with each other, and they get closer, they get bonded together. Uh, I see that every... I, Every day, every every time, and, and yeah, you can see them. They, they've been doing eight, nine months together already. But there's something they know. Hey, I didn't know that, brother. Or hey, I didn't know that. But they get closer together as a community, and it, 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 it's a bond. Uh, some guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, you yeah, first you walk in, not trusting nobody, not knowing nobody, not you know, like who do I talk to, whatever. But they, eventually, when the whole year goes by, you see them talking to everybody, holding each other's hands, praying together. That's a community. And it's awesome to see every day when I'm at work, I, I look in the camera and I see it. It's awesome to see when you see that's a community. This what builds the community, people that from different kinds of lives coming together as one. That's beautiful, Jesus. Absolutely. And you know, um, it's not, I mean, it's not easy in the program that you work with. If, if, if somebody is done, if, they, if they're, they feel like they're done, then they, they leave. But it takes courage. It takes endurance to stay in. Yeah. As far as that's, a good, that's a good point. That's a great point. Because when you see another man want to leave the program or whatever, 
That's when the other gentleman, iron shop is iron, right? So that's when another gentleman comes in, hey, brother, you need to stay. This is what, this is what you're looking for while you're in here. But that's what they, that's, that they come together as one to help another brother not to leave the program. That's the main thing about it also. Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to share that I, I just really agree and, and appreciate the comments that people are making tonight. And Barbara, you've really lifted up a vision for um, for what community can look like. The the one you know, as I reflect on what it takes to to really enter into relationship as you were talking about, Barbara, not just coming on a Tuesday or Saturday, sitting next to one another, being in proximity to each other, but not really being in, uh, really not increasing, um, you know, kind of the, the intimacy of our relationship. Um, because we don't, we, don't we, we may not, we may sit next to each other for months and never really actually know much about one another, share life together, share experiences that we've had. So I was just thinking that some of one of the, you know, there are many barriers to that that we have talked through a little bit tonight. You have led us, Barbara. And I was just thinking about what, what it looks like in order to, to do that because there are so many enemies to that kind of community. Um, and... I think it's just a, a helpful for me to reflect on why why it is that in Scripture, in Galatians 5, why the fruit of the Spirit are named as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Like those are the fruit of the Spirit. And all of the things that become an enemy to that type of community that you've described tonight uh, are not in that list. So competition. Right? I'm, I become competitive with you, right? Um, ego, pride, um, you know, uh, self-loathing, self-deprecation, self-hate, um, you know, uh, harshness, sharp words. I mean, all of the things that, that are enemies to the kind of community you've described, none of those things are in the list of the fruit of the Spirit. In my experience, the, the deepest relationships in a diverse community absolutely require these fruit, the humility, the gentleness, the self-control, the patience, the kindness, the love. And I think that's, that really is what is absolutely the path uh, to the kind of community that you've described. That, that, is, that is so true, Phil. And um, I'm so glad that you brought that up, the fruits of the Spirit. And not only as we... So not that anybody in this room has ever done this. So not only as we look at somebody else and wonder if they are producing fruits of the Spirit, but if, let's say, there's something we need to address in our brother and sister. Something has come up, and something that it, it's important because of relationship. We want to, you know, we want to be a good friend. Um, we want to say something. Our approach to that person really needs to be drenched in the fruits of the Spirit. It's not a time where we put it aside and go, rules are rules, you know, you did wrong, you need to straighten up. No, it's, 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 it takes energy, it takes pause, it takes intentionality, it takes prayer to go, how do I approach this person in love? How do I show, how do I show grace? How do I not, um, how do I be curious? How do I be creative? How do I, um, you know, be hopeful in this situation. And so, yeah, this is, we are invited into something that's amazing. And so, um, it's funny, Greg, 
I don't know, Greg, my husband at home is keeping track of it. Um, he's, how many times I say absolutely and amazing. And so I'm try, I was going <laughs> to start to look up the thesaurus, let's find other words. But when I really believe when Paul and throughout the scripture, when we are called to live differently than the world, it doesn't mean that we don't get to participate in the world's culture and, and arts, you know, like I'm a big fan of the world's culture and arts and such. What's different is we are being invited to live differently. We're invited to live in this love and this fruit of the spirits and not be um, guided by fear and self-protection. Now, to be wise about that, right? Like that's part of the conversation we had last week. But we are invited into a different way. I mean, this is why the early Christians, what was something that they were called? They were living in the upside down, you know, kingdom, right? Like, so they were odd. The early Christian church was seen as odd because they were loving each other. And they were, and that's what we are invited into. So as a church community, you know, OnRant's mission is, um, like we exist to be a healing community, healing its community. This is how we do it. It's not easy. There is not one answer ever. And that's really can be hard and frustrating for us all. But in community is how, how we will heal and grow with each other. And, um, and this is, this is what it means to, to walk with God, I truly believe. Any other questions before we end our time? Yes. Do you mind reading from the mic? Where's the mic? Thanks, Grandpa Baby. Hello, hello. Um, I feel like, well, what I got to say is um, I feel like the new person. I feel like I'm put on the spot about certain things. I just wanted to say that, um, you know, um, I was here before and I had a little fallback about four years ago. When I walked back in these doors, he said, welcome back. When I, and his wife said, welcome back. So I got to go home on pass, and pass when I'm, I, I'm a quiet type of person, especially when I'm at home. I just sit back and want to hear every wrong the crane kid's doing, because I got a lot of them, and they just, so I feel at home sitting here. And um, I don't know, when I, I need a ride, he said, I'll get you there. You talk about that circle, I feel that circle. I do know, I might not know a lot of things, but I do know that we all believe that Lord Jesus Christ is alive, and he saved me from dying in the hospital. And um, I do talk back, you want to talk. And I cry a lot. Thank you for sharing that. So glad you're here. So glad you're back. So. Oh, thank you from the chat. All right. Anybody else? Sorry. I would like to just go on record saying that everybody here in this room has really been amazing to me in this moment of my, what I'm going through. Like, everything looks bad, seems bad. And just to hear people talk and me talk and think is has been amazing. I feel like this really is the start of me feeling of healing in this community. It's been, I wanted you all to know that I appreciate everybody that talks and are nice to me. <laughs> I'm new here, so it's a little, you know, scary. So I appreciate everybody here. You belong here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're so glad you're here. All right. Well, let me honor your time. It's we're a little after seven thirty, so um, let me close this out in prayer. God, thank you for God, thank you for loving us and knowing knowing what we needed, Lord. That we need we need you first, and that you don't call us to um, to ignore ourselves. That you want us to learn more about how to receive your love, to um, how to love ourselves, how to love our neighbor how you, um, you knew that it wouldn't be easy to love you, to love ourselves, and to love our neighbor. And you've given us all these guidance. Lord, your word is full of all these examples and stories. And you've given us each other full of different life experiences and stories. And Lord, um, thank you that there isn't just one way. Like 
knowing that we're all so very, very different. And depending on our age even and what part of the journey we are, we may be different. And so, Lord, thank you for giving us grace and this unconditional love and these guideposts um, so that we could follow. Lord, help us to... Um, Help us to take those steps into community, whether um, we, need, we need some extra something because we're exhausted or we, we just don't know. We just need some open doors. Some, we need to see some invitations. Lord, if there's um, ways that we can invite others into our lives, of ways that um, we can invite others to uh, experience the joy that we are experiencing um, walking with you, or give us, give us that creativity, that hope, and encouragement. Pray that you be with us. Um, us as we, thank you actually for being with us as we take all of these baby steps forward. And yeah, we thank you for this time tonight. In your name, amen.